Hello and welcome to the fourth video in the lockdown build. Now we have done a lot so far. We've built the wing, uh, we've gone through the electronics that I'm using, I've swapped a couple of things around and now we are ready, now the hardware's in, to finish the iNav setup. Now the wing itself looks very very different uh, but don't worry all I've done is I've just put on the covers, installed the receiver into the position, that's what these little doohickeys are at the side and put the servos into the wings and put the wings on. So it's uh, very, very similar. I'm going to remove the prop in a minute. I just had that prop on uh, just as a kind of a weight aid just to get the central gravity right. Central gravity in the manual is pretty uh, pretty clear and the, uh, the kind of control horns uh, and everything have gone on really nicely. So there's two things I need to do in the video. First of all, I need to plug it back into iNav and configure all these other extra pieces. Obviously we installed the video transmitter, we need to set that up. We've installed the receiver that has a smart port connection, we need to set that up as well. And we also need to configure things like the on-screen display. And then the final thing with that prop off is we will enable the outputs and iNav will then start sending information out the pins both to the ESC to run the motor but also to the servos in the arms and we can run through the final setup pieces and then next video we can go out to fly. So let's start by plugging the board back into iNav and configuring all the ports and getting ready to plug in main power for the very first time and that's always a slightly interesting situation and I'll talk about how I'll make sure that when I plug the battery in the magic smoke doesn't come out. So here we are ready to plug in again. Uh, just for those who are interested, this is actually the servos that I've ended up putting in here. These are Turnergy TGY-225MG. Uh, 225MG is a pretty standard size for this kind of wing. Uh, high tech would have been my preference. I end up getting the Turnergy ones. Uh, when you're ordering cheap servos like this, top tip is order three because uh, there's pretty much guarantee that one of the ones you're going to order has a problem. And I ordered three and surprise prize, one of mine did. This is why it's always worthwhile getting your servo checker out and running the servos with it before you install them into the wing. It's horrific when you go through the trouble of gluing things in, setting up other bits and pieces like the control rods, and then find that you've got a problem. So with that tip out of the way, uh, we're all ready to plug in and do the next bit of configuration. Now I would always recommend just do one final check, make sure that you haven't done anything stupid and plugged something in the wrong way around. It's easy to do when you're uh, trying to keep things neat. Everything in here looks pretty good. So I'm going to plug it in and we will complete the iNav setup. So here on the computer, let's click on connect and let's see, we can see everything. Yeah, there's everything still working. Always good to check after you've installed it into the model. And we can see that it's uh, again, still level. Now we will need to sort a, a little bit of nose up attitude. So let's do that first, just go into configuration and then let's zoom down to the board alignment, pitch degrees. Now we're gonna guess this, let's just try six same reboot and what we're looking for is a minus six attitude so when it's sat level on the bench it's uh, actually going to fly slightly nose up which is what we want yeah which is perfect so as I lift the nose it's actually getting it more or less there that will work okay the ports we're going to need to change now you want four uh, if we jump into the wiring diagram Again, I've wired it as per this diagram. So UART4 is um, for smart port. So I've got um, SBUS in here. Smart port is going to TX4. And then the other port that we're interested in is TX8 or UART8. That needs to be the tramp protocol for the video transmitter that we've got set. So UART4 we need to set as smart port. Probably going to be telemetry, isn't it? Actually, yeah. UART 8, we are going to need that set for IRC Tramp. Save and reboot. Now, there are a couple of other cute things that we'll need to do. On screen display, let's do that next. 
Now we didn't do much with this last time. I've set the camera to PAL, so I know it's going to be PAL. Let's make sure it's set like that. Uh, quite a cute thing is if you set it to NTSC, it kind of gives you this mini version. Um, PAL is what the camera is set to and you get a few more lines to move things around. So let me just very quickly move this um, and then we know what we're doing. So with that all done, there's a couple of extra little things that I like to set up. First of all is uh, the settings for how much to bank and other things as well. Now I use a little file that has all of this stuff on. I'll put a link in the description. And if you just cut and paste that into the CLI, that will do a lot of the settings. Let's just save that and let it reboot. Last thing to do then is also to set up auto launch in the way that you want it. Uh, there's gonna be a number of things that you need to go through. Check out my launch video and uh, just set these to how you want them to be. Go through each of them in turn. Again, they're all explained in my launch video. Once that is done, then we'll save it. And once that's done, the last job is going to the outputs tab and turn on the outputs and then save and reboot. So hitting save and reboot means that when we power it on with the battery, it's going to send signals out to both the ESC and the servos as well. But let's jump onto the desk and let me show you how I check that when I plug the battery in for the first time, there isn't gonna be the magic smoke. So there's only two things that I do to make sure that the magic smoke doesn't come out. And I'm very, very lucky that I see it very rarely. Now, obviously you can use something like this. This is the Vifly version. This is a smoke stopper and it will go in between the battery and the model. Now this is great if you have made a mistake, but it's not a substitute for doing the basics. I would recommend before you plug in the battery for the first time, stop, take a break, come back to it and look at every single wire that you've connected. Does the positive wire go to the positive wire at the other end? Does the negative wire go to the negative or ground wire at the other end? And follow everything through. It's very easy, particularly when you're trying to be neat, to make a mistake. Correct any wiring errors before you go too far. Now things like getting your signal cables the wrong way around isn't gonna cause the magic smoke to come out normally. It's when you have things like the positive wire connected to the negative ground pad or vice versa. So step one is double check that you haven't made a mess of the wiring. In theory, if you've got to this point already, most of the five volt electronics that's on the flight controller is probably okay. The last check that I do is I get my multimeter and I put it onto the resistance setting. And at the moment it's measuring the resistance of the air between the probes. So it's open line or basically a super high resistance. If I touch the probes together, then it goes down to zero resistance, zero ohms, which is a dead short, which is what you need to do. It's always worthwhile doing that just to make sure that there isn't a problem with a, maybe a break in the actual wires or something here and uh, give you a false sense of security. So all I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna pop these probes onto the pins for the wire that's going into the flight controller. And what I should see is initially, the numbers go down really low and then come up. So if you just watch those numbers, I'll try and do it so you can still see the screen. Okay, so I'm gonna to touch it now. You see it goes really low and then it goes up really high. And if I take the other probe off, it goes back to open line again, massively high resistance. If I put the probe back on the other pin, It go, does the same thing. Now what's actually happening here is all the capacitors in the power system are being charged up. Remember those big capacitors in things like the ESC? They are drawing the little bit of current that this uh, multimeter is providing to measure the resistance and it's actually charging up the capacitors and that's what you're seeing. If it behaves like that, you are in great shape and we can move on to the next step and actually power it up for the first time. So with that power checked, we are ready to plug it in for the first time. Uh, don't install your USB cable for this. I would make sure that the computer is well out of the way for the first time in case we have a problem. Now I am gonna power on the radio. Uh, as we are going to uh, move, the con move the control surfaces uh, just to make sure that everything is working. Make sure that the radio is 
There we go. He's ready. So, the moment of truth. Always a little bit worrying, even when you've done all your tests. Here goes. Well, that looks promising, doesn't it? Nothing burst into flames, no smoke. Um, and that tends to be my experience when you do those checks as I've just shown. So let's plug it into the computer and let's have a look uh, at, at where we are and if it's gonna work. So I'll click on connect and here we are, everything's still moving. Now, if we move the sticks on the radio, we should see the flight control surfaces move as well now. So let me just do that. And at the moment, only one of them is moving. Now that probably means that I've got the other one plugged in the wrong place. Now if we go into the outputs, you can see they're turned on. You see it's supposed to go into outputs three and four. As I move the sticks, you can see the numbers moving on the screen. So what I've probably done is I've probably made a mistake of where I've plugged everything in. And don't worry if something like this happens, this is pretty normal. So now we've done that, if I move, there we go, everything's all moving. Now the way it should work is that as I move the stick down, that both of these control surfaces should come up. Now this one is, the linkages I think are a little bit stiff. Uh, this one is moving in the right direction, this one isn't. If we go on the computer, we can see that it's output 3 is wrong. If I just reverse output 3 and click save, then now as I move the stick down, they both come up and they're moving in the right way. So that all looks very promising. Now the other thing we can do is we can test the motor. Again, we haven't got the prop installed, so what we're going to do is we're going to enable live outputs. This means that we can actually run the motor directly from the computer and we're going to raise the master just a smidge in. And that I think is moving. That all looks fantastic. So we're in really good shape. The last thing we can do, a couple of things we can check. Uh, if we put on an FPV screen, can we see the camera? Yes, we can. And we can also see the on-screen display. Obviously, it's looking at the wall at the moment, but that is really promising. And then the last thing we can do is make sure the telemetry is working. So if I... Telemetry lost. Oh, that's promising. If I um, go across into the telemetry screen on the radio and then look at all the sensors that I'm getting. Hopefully you can see that on the screen. There's loads and loads and loads and loads and loads. So I discover new sensors. So that means I can set up the INAV script on the radio as well. And we are ready for the first flight. There's only really one last thing that I'd do. There are a couple of little cute things that you can do on the uh, settings. And if you go into the Matek pages, there's things here about changing some of the gyro stuff, about using the second camera. Uh, just go through and set all this. Some flight controllers also talk about the settings that you need if you're going to do things like have the current and voltage settings. So go through that and make sure that that's all working as well. But I think we're ready. I'm going to disconnect from the uh, model and then I'm going to unplug the cable. See how warm the VTX is getting. Not bad. Unplug the power. And the only other things that I would potentially do is, if you've got a bit of time, is you can use the output screen to just change the middle channel positions to get these at uh, 90 degrees and make sure that you've got a little bit of up tilt just to manually adjust all the linkages to make sure that both the control surfaces are slightly tilted up. So there we have it, she's all set. The controls are in the right position with that little bit of up tilt on the back of the wing that these models tend to like. We know that the motor's running the right way round. We know that on-screen display's working. Everything is set. So I just need a nice fine day and I can go out and uh, 
respecting social distancing, go out and give this thing a try. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to Author Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.